Hello, YouTubers. I am Angela Logan, and this is Everyday Shenanigans. It is Monday, November 4th, 2019, bringing you warm greetings from the high 10. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining me. I am bringing you another update of the Camille McKinney murder case that is deriving out of Birmingham, Alabama. As most of you know, and some of you who may not know, that today, Mr. Stallworth and Miss Brown had a court appearance, and I will read you as, follow, as follows the information derived from that um, news conference that Mr. Derek Collins gave. He is the attorney who was representing Mr. Stallworth. He was the attorney who was appointed to him on the um, child pornography uh, case. So now he is representing Mr. Stallworth in the capital murder case of Miss Camille McKinney. If you need any verification of the information that I'm bringing you pertaining to his commentary, you can go to WVTM 13, Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you very much. And please note that any commentary that I'm bringing you as follows is from news stations, as I've given you the new station that, it, that this report info is coming from. And thereafter, I will be giving my commentary as an opinion of the said matter. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Derek Collins is representing Mr. Stallworth in his capital murder case. I will be bringing you key points from the um, interview that was done that you can verify on WVTM Channel 13 News. Okay, Miss Brown, Mr. Rika Brown, and alias... Miss Quintessa Jackson is allegedly her government name, but Mr. Rika Brown is the name <laughs> that is on the paperwork for this capital murder trial. Um, she has given a statement, everyone, about Mr. Stallworth. They did not clarify what the statement was that she's given authorities, but the stories are against Mr. Stallworth and Mr. Derek Collins, Stallworth's attorney, Learned of this information after the hearing that took place this morning. Okay. The next hearing, which will be in December, um, the two will obviously be tried separately when they go to trial. Since she has now given a statement, this is coming from Mr. Collins, that he sees that now that she's given a statement against Mr. Stallworth, they will be, excuse me, tried separately. But naturally, um, he asked, Mr. Collins asked the judge, could their hearing be separate in this murder uh, case? And the judge denied the hearing for November, I mean, for December to be separate. So as of now, the next hearing, both parties will stand side by side in that hearing. Okay. Now, um, Mr. Stallworth claims he is innocent. 17 officers were present in the court for safety reasons. Stallworth told the judge that he did not have a lawyer, so that's why Mr. Collins was, a, uh, he requested that Mr. Collins represent him in this capital murder trial. Um, the, as I said, the uh, preliminary hearing will take place on December 10th at 9 a.m., uh, Mr. Dominic McKinney and his mother were present at this hearing. They were asked to give a comment by the news. Uh, they declined to give a comment. Okay. As I said, statement from Miss um, Miss Brown was was uh, the information was given to Mr. Collins that she had made a statement about Mr. Starworth being involved in the child's death, and that that he was notified of that after the hearing. Um, people, reporters asked him his opinion and why he decided to represent Mr. Stallworth. And Mr. Collins basically said that it is his job. He knows it is tough due to the fact of the public's opinion and dealing with the public, but he is, um, excuse me, sorry, I'm taking so long. He believes in protecting the rights of those who are charged 
with serious crimes. So basically he said that he likes his job and he wants to defend people, you know, who have been charged with serious crimes and that he wants to protect their rights. So that is why he has done this. He's been in this game for 20 years plus and he is well adapted to criminal cases. So he has no problem with going forward uh, in this trial and representing Mr. Stallworth. Okay. Fair trial. He does not think that Mr. Starworth will get a fair trial in the state of Alabama. You know, he didn't just say Birmingham. He said the state. So I don't know if he will file a motion to have his state move to another county or state. We will see as the trial unfolds. Um, once again, the article pertaining to this news video still claims that Miss April Thomas was at this party with family and Camille, which there has been uh, refutes that she was not there through social media post. But I just wanted to mention that that was in the video. You can verify it yourself, through, as I said, through WVTM 13 News. And children alleged that a man got out of the vehicle and put Miss Camille McKinney into the SUV. And this is information deriving from the news outlet channel 13 news so if you have a problem with anything that i have said thus far you can verify it in the article via also the video with mr collins stating his representation of mr stalwart so i've given you the key points of that video now i will give you my 411 Pertaining to this uh, matter, okay? Now, okay. The following information I'm giving you is speculation, my opinion, others' opinions. So, therefore, if you do not want to follow thereafter, you can log off at this point and not follow through with the video. That was just an update from the Channel 13 News. As of now, I will be giving you my own opinion, an opinion of some others. Now, um, I have to make that clear because I think some of you get a little jiggy when Big Ange gets on here and starts talking about this said situation. So I have to let it be known what was said news and what is speculation opinion. Okay. Interesting that commentary in the video states that the children said a man. They never clarified that they saw Mr. Stallworth put the child into the car. That was a key point I noted on. Um, Mr. Stallworth is adamant that he is innocent, still basically saying that he is innocent and he wants to defend himself. Now, I don't know if that means he will take the witness stand. One can only assume, as we said, as Mr. Collins said, he's not trying to give too much information about what his client has said to him in confidence, but he did admit that, um, Mr. Stallworth is, is saying that he is innocent of the capital murder charges of Miss Camille McKinney. Now, this nonsense with the mother and children being present at the party. For those of you who, who have not followed social media posts and rants and raves and on and on, it has been stated by people who attended the party, people who, the lady who threw, well, mm, mm, let me take that back. Okay, the female who threw the party. Yes, I said that. Um, mm, she states that Miss April Thomas was not there. Now, mind you, I gave you all information days ago of a video that is on the news outlet. A news interviewed her cousin, and her cousin was the mouthpiece for Miss April Thomas. Why Miss April could not speak for herself, I do not know. But once again, someone is giving commentary on her behalf that she was outside watching the child jump inside of a play inside of a bouncy house. She went inside for three minutes. And when she returned, her child was nowhere in sight. She alleges that she searched for the child. And I guess thereafter, 911 was alerted at some point during that evening on October 12th. But as you all know, there has never been a statement given by Miss 
Thomas nor the police of the events that transpired on October 12th. Okay, we know this now. All right. It's like I have to articulate my words because some of you get so jiggy on here about who knows what and who don't know what. And like I have said, everything I say is either coming from the news or speculation. I don't have no problem with saying that. I'm not here to argue with any of you because I see it is redundant at this point to try to make a person understand that when you spin a story, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And this story can be of no relevance to anybody sane and lucid without a beginning. So the fact that we as have not yet received confirmation of a timeline pertaining to the events of October 12th, then nothing else makes any sense. Be it testimony from a child, a video surveillance, Pookie, Ray Ray, Donald Duck. It makes no sense. It doesn't even matter. Because you see, I prefer to hear what happened from the mother since she is the provider of the child. Now, mind you, if she was not present at that apartment complex, then I would prefer to hear from the person who was watching her, whomever it was. We would like to hear from you. I, Angela Logan, would like to hear you tell me, the general public as well, where you were and what you were doing that day that led up to this child wandering off into the park to get kidnapped, lured, whichever word you all would like to use, because that's another thing I'd like to talk to you all about. When we say kidnapped, we have to think about that for just a second because in the video, you don't see anyone grabbing the child, snatching her up, running with her. We can barely make the video out. Some of you say you can. I'm not a legend that I can. But I can. one thing I can say is that I can't even say that it was kidnapping because the child and the other child followed a figure off out of sight of the video camera. So let's say a parent was involved. How then are you going to say that it was kidnapping if it was a parent involved? Because then, hello, that parent could say, well, I sent such and such to go get her out of the park. If it ever came to that, if a parent was involved, I'm just giving you my commentary on what is has been available to the public, okay? There are still speculations surrounding uh, this child's death. Many of you are still talking via YouTube, via social media. I have yet to go on social media to see uh, said information because I have just like had enough of all the different stories. Naturally, many of you have commented and given those said scenarios uh, below in the comment section. And I try to respect everything that some of you have said, and I listen. Some I have responded to. I have had a lot of you who are loyal as far as commenting, baby. And I have to give it to you. You bring it. You do bring it, some of you. And some of you bring shenanigans, too. But see, I'm not worried about you all because guess what? As I said, I don't know you. I don't even know the people involved. So I'm not even about to take it serious because... I don't know what happened and neither do you. And we are only speculating according to the information that has been given. Some of you have been bickering and arguing back and forth about evidence linking Mr. Stallworth and Dorica to this case. But as I have said in my lucid mind, when Mr. Smith, Chief Smith gave the information that the child was found in the landfill, never once in the in that interview press conference did he say that there was evidence. I don't remember hearing him say that. I just remember him saying they found the child and that Mr. Stallworth was arrested. So I had to kind of like read between the lines that they had something on Mr. Stallworth. But to this day, 
Chief Smith has not verbatim said, this is what we have against Mr. Stallworth in connection to the murder, capital murder of Camille McKinney. This is what we have as evidence in connection to this child's murder, Mr. Rika Brown, Miss Quintessa Jackson, whichever name you want to call her. He has not given evidence against her. This is what I keep saying to you all. I'm tired of commenting about this. They're not going to tell us everything. That is obvious from looking at everything, the posts, this and that from different people. We're not getting any information pertaining to this child's um, case. And I understand they have their reasons for what they will tell the public, what they will not tell the public. But I think at this point, we're past the secret stage. We're past that because now she has been found deceased. Court hearings are now occurring with two suspects. So it's like, when are we going to find out one, a timeline? I'd like to hear that. And what I find baffling is that, excuse me, I've been watching several videos um, on YouTube pertaining to uh, Miss April Thomas. And as I have said, I do not want to knock someone under their circumstances, but this is my opinion. I would prefer, as I said, to hear what happened to the child from the mother? I feel like we are owed that. Anyone who feels that we are not, there's something wrong with you. Because one, she is the provider and the, and the sole parent custody. She has sole custody of the child. So how do you think it's okay to go and file a report that you signed your government name on? That your child is missing? Then that, go, then that statement leads to an Amber Alert. But then you don't want to tell the public what happened on October 12th. Well, I mean, really, come on now. We, 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 we've played the game long enough now. The child has was missing as of three weeks Saturday and then soon found thereafter deceased. Why now we can't get a timeline on what happened on October 12th from the mother? What is the problem? I want to know what is the problem. Why are you people thinking it's okay if she doesn't say anything? How long can you play possum about what happened and use excuses she can't talk? No disrespect to the brother. He gave commentary in a live feed on the day of the funeral that every time she tries to come forward to speak, she cannot put it into words, yah, yah, yah. Well, I understand you would say that because you are her brother. You believe your sister. There's nothing wrong with that. But... Yes, the public has come down hard on her because she is the provider for the child and she has not yet come forward to say what happened. Was she there at the Tom Brown complex or not? Did she leave her child with someone at the property? Did she leave the child with the cousin? Who is the cousin? Does the cousin actually live at this Tom Brown complex? If she does, what's her name? Is it Miss Long who spoke on her behalf to the news outlet? You see, those are the things we have yet to get confirmation. All we get now is other people telling us, yes, that's the cousin. But see, to me, that's not good enough. And I'm not knocking any of you who give that information. But what I'm saying is, you know that sounds crazy to have outsiders chiming in on social media, YouTube to say, yeah, that's the cousin whose house that Camille was allegedly staying at when she went missing. Why can't that cousin, if it is Miss Long, say, yes, she was staying at my house that day. Hey, I was responsible for that child. Or, hey, her mother was here and was responsible for her. Or April telling us, hey, I was there Went inside, woo-woo-woo, came out, she was gone. This was around 7 o'clock, 7.30, 8.05. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm asking, really. You know, and I think we as the public deserve to know the truth because you're the one who filed the missing persons report. You're the one that gave this information to the police department, and then they in turn gave it to the national organization for, um, the, you know, the Amber Alert. So once it was repeated, given out to the public, Authorities were alerted, then now it is public information. And the fact that no one wants to come forward and own their part in how she got gone is baffling to me. 
And that's where I have the problem. Okay? Okay. What is Star Wars and Dorica's connection to this? They have been arrested. As I said, I have yet to hear from the police the evidence that is linking them to this crime. Now, many of you, once again, are assuming they have evidence because you say, whoa, well, why would they arrest them? Well, okay, yeah, I, I can agree with that. Why would they arrest them? I think, truthfully, the porn on his phone is what got the ball rolling. Besides the car being identified, but... How many blue sequoias are running around Birmingham and the Birmingham area and outside of the area? And by no means am I taking up for a pedophile. Let me make that clear, okay? I do not condone pedophilia. I do not condone men who, or women, who partake, partake in watching, looking, lurking of children, be it visually speaking of them, videos, pictures, photos, which and so ever. Okay, but what I'm saying is due to the fact that we didn't get a lot of information from the police pertaining to the case, it was just a guessing game what evidence they had against Mr. Stalwart because you have to remember he did bond out days after being arrested in connection to the child's disappearance. He only got arrested because of the child images that were on his phone. Dorica got violated because of a previous kidnapping case from 2018 pertaining to her children. Were these people just in the wrong place? Okay, they just happened to have some foul stuff on their record. I don't know. But I know, yes, now it does look bad because Dorica has obviously gave authorities a statement about Mr. Stallworth and the child's death. Now, they did not clarify, Mr. Collins, uh, Mr. Stallworth's attorney, did not clarify what Dorica said, um, what information she gave to the police, but she did give a statement. So let's just say, Stallworth took this child. He did something with her. He disposed of her at this dumpster, which is linked to the property that was found at the landfill. But what is her part? Was she actually there at the Tom Brown housing complex when Camille got kidnapped, take, lured, whatever word you would like to use. Because I'm still puzzled about the white woman who was allegedly seen with a gentleman when they were allegedly handing out candy to the children. Did the child who gave a statement, did he say Patrick and Dorica are the two people he saw that day handing out candy? Is he also the guy that he saw putting Camille inside of his vehicle? Those questions have yet to be answered. And I give my opinion because this is my channel and others have given their opinions on other YouTube channels and social media in likes of what I have said. I don't know what happened on October 12th. The only people that know are those who were involved, the child, and God. The rest is speculation. And as I have said, yes, Facebook has been the sole provider of information pertaining to these kids. By no means is all that information that has been leaked out truth. But I do believe that some of the things that have been said on social media, there is some truth to the street. And I think we all know that. Okay. I don't know what else to say. Because it's a sad tale to me. All of this shenanigans going on with this case. The numerous rumors that are still, you know, running amok. I've tried to be respectful and not mentioning some of those rumors. Because, you know, a friend of mine said, don't say anything about the stuff you're hearing as of yet. Let some hearings transpire. Then bring forth some of the rumors. But, you know, it's kind of like. I want to say certain things, but I know I catch flack. I catch flack either way. If I don't say nothing, <laughs> I catch flack. But as I said, these are my opinions. And I've only get, gave a speculative view of this case because there was no information given to 
the public by the police or the mother. I just want to know when will the, when will the mother ever speak up? Why do you, some of you think it's okay for her not to speak up? How do you think that's right? She is the parent. She does owe the public an explanation because that's her child. And she asks for the public to help her and the father. So don't you think you're cheating your child and the public and the authorities by not speaking up about what happened on that day? Come on now. We all grown. And we could stop with this hood mentality and being a snitch and it ain't my problem. And all of you who saw what was going on, you could have notified the mother via Facebook Messenger since some of you love Facebook and you post every five seconds and go live talking about this and that pertaining to the child and the parents. So what is the problem with you going through Facebook Messenger to have notified her to say, hey, Miss Lady, you don't know me, but your child is wandering around. Just wanted to let you know you need to come get her. You could have notified any of her parents, grandmother, cousin, to say, hey, these kids are running amok. The little girl is doing things, using the restroom, whatever you say you saw. You could have called through Facebook Messenger. We know it exists. We know it exists because y'all stay on Facebook, giving the full one and one. So what was the problem that night calling to say these kids are unattended? And let's talk about the other child who was unattended. Miss Long, the cousin, states in the news interview that that child is her niece. So I don't know if that child is directly related to... Um, to Camille, she did not stay, so I'm not going to assume. But you all don't seem to talk about that, that that child had a mother, a guardian. Why was she out? Same thing with the brother. He was out, unattended. Some say he's seven, some say he's 11. I don't know. Don't have his birth records. But just say, he still is an underage child running around. Sad. Some of you don't want to own that. Two other kids are out running around without supervision. This story has to have a beginning. What don't you people understand about that? You can't have a story without a beginning. You can't push under the rug because she was found deceased that well, we ain't going to worry about how she went missing. We just want the people caught. That doesn't make any sense. It's not even logical thinking. But I realize some of you aren't logical because you have the brain of an ant. And you don't have, obviously, any social skills because I don't know anyone that thinks you can tell a story and not have a beginning to a story. Are the parents involved? I do not know. What is Mr. Star Wars and Dorica's part in this? I don't know. It obviously looks bad for Mr. Star Wars and her as well because now Miss Dorica has given information to the authorities that Mr. Star Wars was involved in the death, I'm assuming, you know, one can only assume because we don't even know what she said. It is sad. It is very sad. But some of you feel like there's more to this story, there's more to this plot, that there are more people involved. And I, too, believe this. And why do I believe this? Because of statements that the father gave. Now, one could say he just doesn't know how to talk. He doesn't know how to word his words. He doesn't know how to answer a question proficiently and stick to the subject. But I think about what the child said because he's the only person I believe in this saga pertaining to this child. The child who said he saw the car, the truck, and the people moving about with the child. When he said he saw them switch cars, I ask all of you to think, why would a kidnapper need two cars? When have you heard of a kidnapper needing a second car. That's too obvious and too much time. You're trying to get somebody kidnapped. Who got time to take this one over here and put them over here and why? Because when you kidnap someone, all you need is a car or truck. You don't need a spare car. Why would you need a spare car? If I was to, whoever, you were going to invite someone to partake in a kidnapping. Think about it. Why would you need a second car. Two of you can say, we're going to ride in a car. We're going to go get this person or them. Why would another car need to help kidnap someone? Now, mind you, she's a child. She's small. Why would you need two cars? 
Why would you need two cars? Think about that for a minute. She's a itty bitty spider. You saw her. You went to her for whatever your sick reasons were. Scoop her up. Lured her. Whatever. You don't need another automobile for that. He allegedly owned a big SUV. You can conceal a child in an SUV. The other person has room to sit in the car, be it front seat, back seat, or the back cab. Do you all see where I'm going with this? That's why I feel like others are involved because the child said he saw them switch cars and the child had no reason to lie because he didn't have a dog in the race. He was just a child out playing, playing with his friends. So much missing from this story. And I don't know what else can pop up, but the rumors are endless with this story. And I saw before I got on here, and sorry I'm so late bringing this information because I was trying to upload um, the news, but I couldn't do it from my phone. So excuse that. Sorry about that. You all, I don't know who's behind this because I made sure to go back to WVTM News before I got on here. Somebody has posted a picture of Mr. Dominic and Miss Paulicia. This one picture of Paulicia Hale is an older picture. This is the second baby mother. There's a mugshot of her that I think she attained a year or so ago. And then there's a mugshot of Mr. Dominic. I don't know when that mugshot was taken, but you all Somebody uploaded it, and you can see that it came from, from a phone, and it has their two pictures side by side saying they have been arrested in the murder of, it says not 2019, which I was kind of suspect about that because I thought, well, why doesn't it say in connection to Camille McKinney? What murder are they talking about? Because this is the only murder story that's going on pertaining to his child. So I didn't know if someone made that up, someone put that together on a fake Facebook profile because it looks like it came, you know what I mean? Transferred from a phone. So, although I don't really care for these people and the things I've heard about them, still it's not right to make up a fake arrest photo, article, whatever. Come on, you're too old for that. You all are too old for that. And I know that, like I said, a lot of things have been said about all parties involved, Girlfriends, baby mamas, father, mother, whomever may not be true. Rumors circulating, but still, you all shouldn't be making up fake posts about them being arrested. Let's stick to what is truthful because we have enough speculation about them already. And we already know that him going live helped get the ball crunk with the gossip. Him going live talking about the mother. I think you all know by now he was not talking about Dorica in the ransom uh, commentary on his live feed. He couldn't be talking about Dorica because Dorica was locked up. She had just got locked up, locked up. If I'm not mistaken, that was the same day, that Sunday. So he couldn't be talking about Dorica calling him about a ransom. First of all, he doesn't know Dorica. How would Dorica get his number? Y'all do the math now. How is Dorica going to call Dominic? When she don't know him, he don't know her. She's locked up as well. So how the hell was she supposed to call him? You know, good and well, they hadn't even set up nothing. No, uh, as now they do it where when you go to jail or try to call people, you have to get a card, a prepaid call, prepaid card to call outside to people on the outside. The girl had just got locked up. You know, she hadn't even set that up yet. Anybody with common sense would know that. He wasn't talking about Dorica. He was talking about April. And so commentary about that is, well, you cried a moan and said you pay anything to get your child back. But in the videos, a live feed, you said you ain't giving nobody nothing. You know, cupcake is all right. So that's hypocritical and contradictory to saying I'll pay anything, which he said that on the news. So why is it when you allegedly get a call that your baby <sighs> is kidnapped and the mother had the baby and offered for you to pay a ransom to get the baby back, you'd say, I'm not paying nothing. See, that's crazy to me. And like I keep telling you all, all these little things 
got the ball crunk to all this he said, she said in the first place. Had he kept his mouth closed that day, we wouldn't have had that to even focus on. The cousin who gave the news interview last week, her going live implicating Mr. Dominic in the kidnapping. We wouldn't have had that to go on. But yet you go on the news, Miss Long, and you don't say nothing about Dominic in the news. Because you know probably he would sue. You know what you were doing. You know exactly what you were doing. But you went live for those who don't know. Days after the child got abducted and implicated him as far as robbing people, yah, yah, yah. He's the one that people should be looking at, not April. Why y'all jumping on her? You see, you all fed this nonsense to the public. So those of you who want to get mad about what people are saying and judging, get mad at them. They're the ones who started this. They're the ones who acerbated the situation. Acerbated the situation. Put blame where blame is due. Don't get mad at the public. We are human. People talk. People going to always talk. People going to always assume stuff. And just because I bring this information doesn't mean I believe all this stuff that people are saying. Because I know people talk. But I know there's some truth to what some of the things that they have said. I know there has got to be some truth to some of it. Maybe not all, but some. <sighs> Who are these people? I'm going to be truthful with you. Just from all that I've seen and well heard more or less, this child... I'm telling you, she didn't have a chance with these people because all these ugly things, and I guess I know they are rumored, whatever, but some of the things I've seen just in their demeanor publicly without Facebook, social media comments don't look right and sit right with me. I don't think she had a chance with these people. I really don't. And others have said the same. To the next video, to the next update. You all have a blessed week. I will be back with more commentary. And thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, waiting on Elvis. Love your commentary. You all make me laugh. You all really make me laugh because some of you, y'all go in and it's, <laughs> I just be like, okay. Gotta send a shout out to Miss. Drummond, Long Beach, Mississippi. How you doing, my new friend, my new friend, honey? Thank you, thank you, thank you, because we stay on the phone for hours <laughs> dissecting this saga. Love you, Miss Drummond. Stay safe in Mississippi. Thank you for my other subscribers. I thank you. I enjoy talking to you guys. I really do. Thank you so much. You all stay safe out there. Mind your children. Please do. Bye-bye.